My name's Angela from Angels Grooming in Auckland and today I'm going to show you how to brush out the model dog ready for styling. We first receive it comes in a box about this size and wrapped in plastic. There is there. And basically they come all corded and they need to be prepared before you can groom them. So they need to be brushed out thoroughly without taking out all of the coat. They are based on a poodle base. They already have little shaved feet on the bottom. But they don't have a shaved face, just in case you want to make it into a Westie or a Bichon or Scotty, other dogs like that, or a poodle that doesn't have a shaved face. The top knot is just held with a band, so you can just take that off. And if you're going to do a Westie or a short-legged dog, you can actually, there is a cut line on the bottom of your poodle's foot and you can just cut right through that and essentially then your dog will stand shorter and not nice and square like the poodle would be. The tail has a little bit in there which has not got any cording in it. Most of the body, the actual pieces are pushed into the frame of the body but on the tail they're actually sewn through. So if you wanted to just have that shaved effect on the tail you could basically just pull that off and it would come off like a like a little base. And the pieces that you do take off you see here there's some that are a little bit long. You can actually just cut those off. If we were doing a poodle and we we're going to be going short here anyway we could just take those off ahead of time and keep them for later on in case we want to make little swatches to help fill up more of the the uh, mane or up in the head there. There's a little one that I did earlier, where I've just tied it at the bottom here, and then it literally is this, banded and brushed out. So for brushing, you don't really need very many tools. A good pin brush, this is a nice pin brush because the ends are nice and round. They don't have that little shape on the top that can catch in the coat. They, are, It's very smooth, so they're a very nice one to use, and your trusty comb and a couple of bands if you just want to help keep the bits out of the way that you're working on. But basically the most important thing about doing the dog is to start at one end and work your way through and be thorough but don't keep brushing until there's nothing left. If you want a dog that's going to have a thick coat then you need to make sure that you're not over brushing it and taking everything out. So basically you just gently go through each cord one at a time and you'll see some here does come away so by the time we get through this whole dog, I should think there'll be a substantial amount of hair on the table here. So you have to forgive me for working on a table at home at night time, but through the day we're of course just too busy in the parlour. So I see the odd cat come and stray across the table. We'll try and keep that out of your shot. As you can see, it's coming out quite a bit, but it's leaving a lot behind as well. So you literally go through each one of these cords one or two at a time and just gently tease them out and you can check with the wide part of your comb to make sure that you have got right down to the base but really gently tease it out and take a little bit of time doing it so that you get a really nice finish it's just the same with normal grooming the more you put into the preparation the better your finished article will be so the types of dogs that you can make with these model dogs are things like poodles pretty much any style of poodle um, you can do Westies, Scotties, uh, Lakeland Terriers, Kerry Blues, you could try for a Bedlington. Their stance isn't particularly good for that, but they, they do scissor up nicely. So if you wanted the coat a bit thinner, you could just brush it out a lot more and get it a bit thinner. And there's really quite a few different breeds you can do. And to make them look more like the breed that, that does actually dye up very well. We can use some spray in colour just to give them a little bit of colour and if you Google um, model dogs you'll find quite a few photos of ones that have been done before. Uh, some people say that they can dull your scissors a little bit so if you're going to be doing this you might want to consider either using a, a, a se separate pair of scissors to your good daily ones or perhaps doing it just before you send them away if it would be sharpened. But as you can see it brushes out very easy, it's not a difficult job. It's just a little bit time consuming to make sure that you're not... Cats running around now, can you hear them? 
uh, just to make sure that you're not taking out all of the hair and you're leaving a good thickness in there. So I'm not going to show you two hours or more of completely brushing, but I will stop and start this when I get to various areas so that you can see what stage I'm at. But if you get to bits and you know ahead of time what style you're going to do, you really would pay to save some of these cords just for, as I say, making these little fills or just even just for practicing scissoring or whatever I will else show you like. just before I move on and carry on with the brushing is in the ears. Obviously the poodles have their nice drop ears down here with their ear leather. And the ear leather is actually, I'll bring it up so you can see, is actually sort of macrame-made through here. So if you were going to do a Westie or somewhere that you didn't need these ears to be quite so long, these little plush rows here can actually take those rows out and again save those for later and you can then scissor in the shape of the ear or you can weave these up yourself into a shape of an ear before you start. So it depends on how good you are with weaving and things like that to whether you scissor the shape in which is quite easy to do um, and pull these bits out or if you're doing something with a cocker spaniel or a um, poodle with these drop ears then just leave them in and just leave all the weaving in the bottom and you brush all of the cords out on the top. So I'm going to carry on with this and I shall show you in a few minutes what it's looking so, like. One of the first things you notice when you start to get down underneath the dog to get the hair brushed out between the legs is that a matter of access. Uh, obviously when they put them together they must have the legs separate, put all the pins and stick them into place which is great but when we go to brush them out we have about this much space between the legs to do that so if you just bring all of those little coils to the front we can reach them and gently brush them out this way you'll see I've probably been going well, just about 15 minutes now, not quite but almost 15 minutes and you can see I have a reasonable pile of fur hair from this one leg that I've brushed out so do expect a lot of hair to come out but there is this whole leg is pretty much brushed out now there is a lot of coat still left that's just the one leg there's a lot of coat left I've probably got um, maybe not quite a foot but probably close to it so about 25 centimeters from the front to the back there and it comes out from the dog probably a good 10 centimeters or 4 inches so there is a lot of hair left in there and I'm just gently teasing it out you want to do this uh, when you've got a bit of time to relax and do it you don't want to be rushed so if you're coming to one of our workshops or seminars um, please do try and do a little bit each night and, and get it brushed out or choose a day when you're a bit quiet and get the brushed out beforehand it's definitely not something that you want to just turn up on the day and think oh, I'll just quickly do it it'll be fine because they definitely are a time consuming thing to brush out but if you take them nice and gently actually quite relaxing and quite easy to brush out I say so I'm going to carry on through this a bit further and I should think that it will look very lovely when it's finished well, one other thing most competitions you may find others that are different but generally with a model dog competition you find the judges won't go and comb your dog through after they're judging it so if you're entering a model dog competition check your rules on that first but generally they don't comb them through because the coat is so soft and so susceptible to damage if the judges were to to comb through checking for any problems um, you could lose the style so that's something to keep in mind at least that if you need to leave a bit of fill somewhere deliberately uh, you can generally do that but they may part the coat and have a look generally they don't it's generally a hands-off process and they judge solely on what they see so I shall carry on with this and I shall see you again shortly so as you can see our pile is getting significantly bigger I'm on to the second leg now I just wanted to show you I've brushed this side and not this side so I just want to show you what the plastic form looks like underneath so here you have the plastic leg going through here and the little pieces are pushed in groups of usually two as it seems into each of the holes so when you brush them out they make this very plush 
parts of this bit hasn't been brushed out that's why you can still see the plastic but where it has been brushed out you don't really see right down I estimate there's probably I guess around about from just counting what there was on one leg I'd say probably between two and three thousand of these little coils so um, yeah you do want to lay yourself a little bit of time I think I'm going to uh, also recommend probably wearing a mask if you are sensitive to dust because there is a little bit of dust coming up here while I'm brushing you can see there's one leg all brushed out and fluffy this one's half of the way through and I've been going probably about 25 minutes I suppose so they estimate on the instructions two hours to brush out a dog I've heard people say it's more like two to four hours is, is more realistic and I think that probably is about right I'd say it probably will take me about three hours to get right through this so I may not get it all finished tonight. I may come back and show you what it looks I'm like. Finished both the back legs now, just coming up to the rump area. I've done quite a bit of the underneath as well. One of the things that I do notice is that the the fibres are all reasonably short fibres. They're not necessarily the full length. So when we see here a group of maybe about eight different length ones. If I take half of those and I cut them to about this length here, whether I am brushing very gently or not, which I am, the coat will still pull away quite a bit. And if you want the coat to be long for perhaps a Cocker Spaniel, you may want to leave this piece up to the skin here not brushed for the underneath parts of the hair to get some length and just brush the top parts but if you are going to be brushing all of the all of the cords all the way up to the skin you'll find that the ones that are long will end up pretty much let's do the short ones to show you but pretty much a similar length to the ones that the long and the short will be pretty much the same so if you're going to be doing a style that you've already determined it would probably pay you to so there's our there's our short pre-cut ones and these are our long not pre-cuts and there's not really a great deal of difference in in the two so it would be it's another one there so it'd be probably wise to if you knew what style you were doing to perhaps take off some of that length before you go through and brush because when you brush that it's going to just pull away anyway and you're going to be left with the same length underneath so if you're doing a long coat don't necessarily brush right down to the skin brush the bulk up here and if you're doing something more of a medium coat then perhaps consider just taking some of that off first. okay so we're about an hour and a half into it now and I just wanted to show you the difference between brushing right up to the top and leaving the length on so this piece here the, this whole side has been brushed right up to the whole length of the body so if I if I lift that coat up you'll see it's been brushed right up to the body so that if I'm doing something quite short around here I'm not going to get into any of this left behind so you can see it very much does follow the shape whereas this side here you can see on the top I've left the length and I've only brushed the ends so if you're wanting a style that's going right down to the ground then I've started underneath here I've left the length of those and I'm just brushing out the ends like this and just bringing it down line combing line brushing a little bit of time so these bits are unbrushed and the lengths are the only bits brushed because then when we finish our style you'll very much just see the length of the coat trim it into whatever style we want and then this top coat here is very much thicker you're seeing in a lot of these other pieces where there's two plugs in every hole um, once you get up to the center back here there's a lot more coat put in so once we've got this length if you were going to do a longer style you could brush this right right up to the top so it would actually layer down um, but you would maintain the length on the bottom by not brushing right up to here 
Well, here we are, all brushed out. I've just tied the top knot back in again, just to keep it out of his face and little bands. You can see where his head is here. Um, there's a lot of coat still left on this dog. Definitely more than enough to make most styles. One thing I should point out is the tail. I said earlier how the tail is stitched in. When you're brushing out the tail, you do need to be careful not to pull the thread through the stitching. So um, it is it is a little bit, you do have to go quite a bit gentler on the tail, otherwise it does tend to pull through. If you wanted a longer tail, you could probably add a couple of little fills in there with those pieces, those swatches we made earlier. But uh, apart from that, the rest of it was actually very easy to do. It did produce a lot of hair, however. I can show you some of it here. So if you're getting these amounts of hair off of your dog, this is all off of this one dog that I started yesterday, and I wouldn't be too worried about that. As I said, it definitely does produce quite a lot of hair. There we go. That's it. All of that off this one dog. Just still fluffy. So have fun brushing out your dog and good luck with what you're going to create with it. Don't forget to post your pictures so that we can see what they look like, but it's a very relaxing thing to do. Thanks for watching.